We think it's important to strengthen the existing and retail and commercial areas and encourage the development of small retail establishments uh, along both Manhattan Avenue, some other streets, but excluding superstores from the area. Area two along the waterfront, area four, the Goldman site, five, the linear strip going into McCarran Park, uh, and number three along McGinnis Boulevard, and uh, number six, these two sites here in, uh, uh, in the eastern sector of uh, Greenpoint. All of these are areas that are now being proposed. All of those are areas that are presently being rezone, uh, studied or will be studied for recommendation for rezoning uh, by the city of New York. We're proposing uh, that uh, the Greenpoint plan do the following in those rezoning areas. One is, where is it? Is in zoning area one, which is this area here along Franklin Street, uh, is that we propose that an area be upzoned from the light manufacturing to a mixed use zone. Uh, this would allow for the expansion of the existing mixed use zone and would bring into compliance a lot of the people who've moved into the buildings in that area for residential uh, uh, quality, we, uh, for use of residential areas. We also suggest that the mixed use zone be explored on this four block area here on the waterfront because we do think, particularly as Greenpoint Avenue goes down to the Greenpoint Park, that there are opportunities here for mixed uses as well. So we would like the city to explore the area between two and four for an expansion of that zoning district. So that's one of the recommendations. The second recommendation is that area number two uh, be up zoned from M31 to an R6 residential zone. Uh, and that, that, uh, that require that whoever develops it set aside a park and continuous waterfront access in return for the right to build housing on that site. Uh, and that uh, the area where the Greenpoint Design Center stays would then continue to be allowed uh, and continue to function as an industrial uh, building uh, is working very, very successfully. It is 100% occupied. They're looking for some additional space. They've agreed to provide waterfront access, and that will enhance the plan. But at the same time, we want to be able to retain the jobs that are there. In District 3, which is over here on the eastern side of McGinnis Boulevard, we're suggesting that this area be zoned from light industrial to a mixed use zone. Uh, and finally, in area number two, uh, which is the area, I, I did that one, sorry. In area number four, uh, which is the Goldman site, here we are requesting a special mixed use district that the criteria for the redevelopment of the district be developed and that once the criteria is developed, uh, and what I'd like to do now is turn on the lights and ask you all for any questions, comments, criticisms that you might have. Um, I know that the pool is a sore issue um, in this community, um, but if that area could be somehow used uh, for the benefit of Greenpoint um, and the environment uh, for our children, you know, with uh, ice skating, with um, maybe rollerblading, the waiting pool for the children, I'd really like to see more of that incorporated in there. And I'm wondering um, why the McCarran Park pool um, was not talked about at all as the land use. Um, I think it was, but I, I think I omitted it. And it if, if it's not in the summary, then that is an omission because it really, uh, what we at one point we were basically adopting the uh, recommendations of the McCarran Park Committee. I, I don't know what happened to it, and that is an omission. And I think we should really follow up on it. 
I, oh, what I'm saying is I think it's, it's a very valid criticism. I think somewhere in the production, that whole idea of what we do with McCarran Park and the recommendations that came from the McCarran Park Committee seem to have gotten lost. And I'm glad you raise it because it's something that should go into the plan before we finish it. is a very valid yeah. and a growing number yes. and they will grow more again I'm back with my same problem you want to follow the Greenpoint plan you want to say it's comprehensive the one from the waterfront now it's comprehensive I agree with the plan there's one fault you're not including the rest of Greenpoint you're leaving out a total of 17 blocks now the residents of St. Louis you the front we can not hear you oh. <laughs> You're talking a total of 17 blocks out of Greenpoint that are being excluded from the plan. Now, it's nice to have a comprehensive plan, but you can't leave 17 blocks of residents out. And it's a mixed use. It's all on the eastern end of the community on the opposite side of the BQE. See, it cuts off at Lombardi Street, and it really should go up to Richardson and Frost. And there's a whole triangle there that's being left out that St. Cecilia's Parish. I, as growing up in that community, know it's a viable part of the community. And if you're going to call it a comprehensive plan, you have to include that part of the community. Because then you're going to be inhibiting the residents later on looking for help to rehabilitate their end of their community. And I find that to be very, very unfair. We were closed out of the process from the very beginning. We spoke to you at the community board at a private meeting, and we still see to this day that you're leaving us out. And I will personally say, and I'll say it in front of everybody in this room, it will not pass the community board because I will rally up those 17 blocks of residents and tell them they are being shited, not as being part of Greenpoint or being part of anything. Thank you. The, the boundaries were determined and expanded a number of times. Uh, there was a consensus on first keeping it on one side of the Brooklyn Queens Expressway. We then, because there was some urging, moved it down to Lombardi. Uh, it's hard for me to argue because there's a lot of logic in what you're saying. Uh, on the other hand, there is also other community organizations and other people who would as vociferously argue that that's part of East Williamsburg. No, 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 no way. I know, and no. you wouldn't, you Stella, you wouldn't, smoke. but others yes. would. We have an LNG tank, and what are you going to do to get this beautiful uh, attraction, tourist attraction? What are you going to do, bomb Cooper Park houses? Come on, have the chimneys. What do we have to have chimneys to remind us of what happened here? You're cutting out an entire part right. of the community, but that's no different than with, with uh, other things that go on at Greenpoint. Um, you have your, the elected officials that are here. They, they, they're the ones who should afford the community, but you put people on this committee that purposely left out that part of the community. No, I thought and, and I think the reason is that you need to ask them why they've been cut out. I you need to ask the, the people on, they on, the, the uh, right on this committee why they left out part of the community. The same way other organizations leave out organizations and people out of things in this community. That's, so this plan is the 197A. It is 197A. Yeah, that's that. So I would like to know what there was no group really in opposition. A lot of it may have been more my determination, I'll take the burden of that okay. for people who live there, that they should be added to this project. And the 197A plus. Yeah, the problem. Right what? Officially, where does this belong right now? We, to Greenpoint or to Williamsburg? We don't know. I mean, this, there is no, there are no real legal boundaries. Which does not belong nowhere. I, I don't want to get into the East Williamsburg Greenpoint conflicts, but it's there are some. Conflict. It has to be an official mm -hmm. statement. Where does it belong? I can say one thing. The committee originally had first the plan started just on the waterfront, only these groups, and then we fought because we said, how could you only take care of the East River and throw the garbage onto the Newtown Creek? So we fought to expand 
on to Newtown Creek, which was a big battle. Because originally, the community board didn't want the place to go to Newtown Creek, so we got to Newtown Creek. Then we wanted to expand it down to all the way we put into the Evitville area. We were told, no, we can't go into the Evitville area. They brought it back to the uh, Meeker Avenue. We're told by who? 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 We're they didn't have Manhattan Avenue, they didn't have McGinnis Boulevard, they didn't have Newtown Creek. It was a constant battle for the last two years. The original plan for eight years prior to that was only the waterfront two blocks on the East River with ideas of putting garbage onto Newtown Creek. So little by little, we fought and fought, we, piece by piece, we were winning. And up to this point, this is as far as we got, which we originally wanted your area in it, but we were told to take it out. So if you fight, I welcome, I'll join you in the fight. How can we agree with you that all that should be? Because in our final battle, we won. The library that we have now, because in the 70s, we had a beautiful, like this right. was an right. Andrew right. Carnegie right. library, and this was before the days of the Landmark Preservation Society. And it was torn down, and now we're going to, with hindsight, built another historic building. It was beautiful. If you check the Greenpoint archives, you will cry as an architect to see what was torn down as to what we have now. I think your point is why there's still nostalgia. Mm -hmm. The point's very well taken. And there was a, we will try at this stage to I think our biggest problem is affordable housing. Okay? That's our biggest problem. The majority of the people that I grew up with can't afford to live here. They move. Okay? And my question to you is, what exactly is your plan? Are you going to offer to a developer to, uh, in order to get the perk of building on the waterfront some exclusive high-rise stuff he's also going to put in some affordable housing? And who exactly are you building that for? First of all, just new or seniors or what is it that you We're proposing is the expansion of areas that can be converted to housing. Some of them will be existing buildings that can be converted. We're also calling for access to finance for everybody so that more people could get loans for co-ops or buying their own small homes at below market rates if necessary. So that's one of the elements there. On the waterfront, it's privately owned already. The two sites that we're talking about are owned privately. And what we're trying to do there is in order to give them the right to build some market rate housing, to use some of the tax laws that allow them to set aside 20% of the units for affordable housing. It's the only programs that exist in today's world for providing affordable housing. So, Name what? Name one. The, the eight, affordable housing. The 80, all right. And so, and so what we're proposing there is not allowing that those buildings be higher than the densities that now exist in the community. That's why the zoning is not R8 or R10, it's R6, so that it keeps the present fabric of the community. We don't want anything that will go in there that will violate the, pre the, the texture and the quality of the heights and uh, of buildings. Uh, but after that, the kinds of subsidies that are going to be necessary are really going to have to be programmatic and not zoning. That's all we can deal with now under the plan. That we've been trying to make all along, that the, the plan needs to call for affordable housing wherever there are opportunities that that be done, including the first time home article, particularly in this community. So you retain the young, and you need to build more daycare centers and something like that. And Pulaski Bridge, they have a, foot, a footbridge. So why should taxpayers build a footbridge on Manhattan Avenue? 
I think it detracts from the whole plan to have that in there. And I would like to see it deleted. Uh, now, there's something in the plan that's not in the summary about um, the handball courts in McCarran Park. I know where that proposal came from. I don't know if there's anyone here who uses the handball courts. Uh, I, 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 is there? Uh, uh, is there anything wrong with them? What well, does it have to be redesigned and moved? Which is what is in the uh, in the in the newspaper? Yes, it's in the new, it's in the document to redesign and move the handball courts. I think that, you see the, the the Parks Department of New York is expert at wasting taxpayers' money. All they need is is a, is a group like us to put forth this stupid proposal, and uh, and, and and they'll do it. They'll be happy to waste taxpayers' money. So so that should be taken out. I must say I don't remember that. Now you say uh, some buildings need to be taken down and some should be saved. I'm not sure if anything there deserves yeah. to be saved. Uh, and and who's going to if, if whatever is done there, who's going to pay for it? The taxpayers, right? No. no. That would be private development. I would like to see the document say uh, that. We should leave the door open for a soup for a mall. No. No. I think, no. I think no. No. that property, that property is right. Let me finish my that property is right on the river. Goods can come in there from from the river by barge. You wouldn't you wouldn't need a whole lot of trucks. No. 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 Hey. Now, Man's allowed his opinion. Yeah, I, 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 my, my wife would love to have a mall there. And I, a lot of women would like, love to have a mall there. So we should not close the door to that. By the way, we are taking notes. Of the 20% of the affordable housing that's going to be offered, how much of that is going to go for senior citizen and for handicapped? I can't tell you. Because there's a formula for handicapped, any new buildings that are going up, certain percentage has to be offered for handicapped. First of all, it does not tell you what kind of housing will be built there. It can only tell you the density and the number of units, but it can't tell you who's going to afford being able to buy there. We're making corollary recommendations that we know there's a need for some affordable housing in this community. We can't, in the zoning, because zoning is neutral when it comes to what is there uh, in terms of the sponsorship of the housing. So I couldn't in any conscience tell you that even if there's a housing site that you own, that you'll know what will be built there five years from now, 10 years from now, or 15 years from now. This is a zoning proposal. You have R6 now in the community. What we're basically saying is that this would expand the amount of land available for housing. We do know that there are some developers like the, the Shulmans who want to convert the lumber yard. And we're saying in order for them to gain the right to change it from what it is now to housing, that there should be some benefits going back to the community. Waterfront access and uh, that at least a certain percentage of the units built be made affordable. But once the zoning is there, all right, there is no real teeth that we have other than a ag written agreement with the private developer. But as a bargaining chip for the reason And that's something that will, that will come with a specific project, but what not with the 197A plan. It but comes when he needs. That's why we say that there should be a special permit and there should be discussions on the Goldman site as to what the parameters are. We haven't had those discussions with the people in the surrounding neighborhood or others, and we're just saying set aside this for that kind of a special district. But it, it's part it, of the one that needs to be clear, right. and doing the rezoning, part of that should be already discussions with the Goldman people and the developers as a bargaining chip for the community to guarantee affordable housing. And not only 20%, because out of the 20%, some of that has to go to senior citizens and handicapped. So I think that some, some, some uh, bargaining... If we could get more, we would get more. But the issue We're giving is them carte blanche if we just say, fine, let's rezone it. That's We're giving point. them carte blanche. One, two, three. Okay, I'm sorry.
Adam and Esky on People's Files. The one point. All right, the first chairman of the water front, but I got thrown off because I was a bad guy. What I, what, I, what I want to talk about now is where we came from, the People's Files. Uh, since 1990, since 1959, they closed firehouses all over Greenpoint, took the Mobile Street dock, uh, uh, fireboat. What I don't see in this plan and the one in Williamsburg is just for fire protection and building up more firehouses. All we have is the Greenpoint Avenue place to cover all of Greenpoint. The Noble Street Dock, if you're going to build housing and stuff on the waterfront, we don't even have the fireball anymore. That was taken away. I'm going back in the history of 75, how they were cutting back on fire protection. We have not had anything restored. Greenpoint Avenue has three fire trucks, they only used two. They took five out of Greenpoint. Anybody know where they were? Greenpoint Avenue, India Street. Morgan Avenue. Avenue. I want to talk about Greenpoint, then we could go south. You got two fire trucks on Greenpoint Avenue to cover that whole northern part of Greenpoint. You want to build houses, you want to build churches, you want to take promenade. You don't even have a water boat to put out fire. You want to go down to New Town Creek. You can't even go down there because you don't have no, no boats to go in. They could fight fires on the river all the way out here put out fires from Greenpoint Avenue to Manhattan Avenue, there was a fire. We don't have that fire today. And I don't see that in any of these plans. Uh, Long Island City, they're doing a plan there. They don't even have a plan for fire protection there. They lost a lot of fire. Can we get some fire protection in this development? Because we're going to develop a beautiful city, and they'll burn them. I don't even want to get into that one. Chris Dillon, and I'm one of the new residents. Been living in Greenpoint for a year. Been living in Greenpoint for a year. Uh, we moved back to New York, to the city. Couldn't afford Manhattan. Moved into a loft in Williamsburg. Got kicked out because of a newborn. Couldn't afford Williamsburg, so now we're in Greenpoint. We like it. We like the character. Uh, one thing I would point out, and he keeps saying it, this is about zoning. The plan has a lot of issues in it, I think, to get everybody involved, but it is about zoning. And one thing I see now is about the waste transfer, and I was wondering about that, and you talk about no more waste transfer, and I hear that from Hunts Point and everywhere, but the waste transfer's got to go somewhere. And I think it's going to come here. I was wondering if that goes here. It's here. It's here. It's here. It's and more here. is going to come. And, and I was wondering if that could be leveraged into getting these other areas. Because I hear garbage trucks all the time. And I thought it was waste transfer. And it's not. It's been happening now. The waste transfer is way over there. So I'm like, can you get money out of that in, in exchange for an increase instead of saying no? On waste transfer stations, first of all, I think it's important to understand, oh, is this better? It sounds terrible to me. Uh, waste transfer stations get their deliveries from trucks. Trucks are moving points of pollution, and they are going to inundate communities like Greenpoint if there is a further expansion of those facilities in this community, and if there even isn't a reduction of it. I don't think the issue is that there have to be more waste transfer innovations in New York City. New York City needs to adopt different recycling policies and different policies to reduce the amount of waste we now produce, and we can do it in such a way that we stage the closing of the a fresh kills uh, landfill. We don't have to do it precipitously and do it as we begin to reduce the amount of solid waste in the city. Everything from requiring less packaging in the stores to doing recycling in all parts of the city uh, to uh, uh, just uh, uh, changing the packaging laws. You have no leverage in that area. You have leverage. We don't, we don't but if the communities unite one after another and say they won't take it, 
and they won't let them in anymore, and they use whatever law and political power they have, and they work with their elected officials, they will be forced to find other solutions. And to say that this community needs more waste transfer stations, I think is wrong. I think it's absolutely wrong. I think what we need to do is get compensation for the ones that already exist to overcome the burdens that this community has. There is a charter provision which is fair share. I sat for six years on the City Planning Commission uh, and we wrote the laws around, uh, the rules around fair share and they're consistently and constantly being violated by the city administration. Not only this administration, but the previous administration. Waste transfer stations should be licensed. They should not be as of right in M31 zones. And because particularly in Greenpoint, the M31 zones were never really only heavy industry. They always had a mixture of residential as well as manufacturing. They were miszoned in 1961. The city came in and just did it. And today, they could not have done an M31 zone in half of uh, Greenpoint because it would not qualify under today's environmental laws as M31, yet they will come in on the 10th Street project and a number of other places and begin to propose it. One of the reasons we want to keep those stacks, Stella, over there is I don't want to see that come down and the marine transfer station uh, expanded. Because that really, really needs to be. So I think what we really need to do. Is no, you're wrong. 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 you are wrong 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 you are wrong
after hearing some of the intelligent comments that I've already heard, is that there ought to be a follow-up procedure with the 197A committee so that a dialogue can be established after we leave this room tonight so that those suggestions to modify the plan can perhaps be incorporated or at least discussed with the members of the committee. Thank you. Thank you.